Hi everyone. So we're going to continue with our talk about um, crystalline solids. And the last thing um, I think that we got to in both classes was at least the two-dimensional lattice. Um, there are four different types that the unit cells can take over, or four different shapes that the unit cells can take over if we're thinking about two dimensions. So again, there's the oblique lattice, which is ultimately stating that I have A and B, and A and B are going to be um, different lengths. And then remember we said gamma is just gonna be that angle between A and B, and it's just an arbitrary angle. Um, and this would be the most common, I think about this as just acting like a parallelogram. Um, square lattice is my second type. If A and B are equal in length and gamma is 90 degrees, then I would consider it to be a square lattice. So A and B must be perpendicular to one another. In a rectangular lattice, the third type of two-dimensional lattice, I see that A and B are two different lengths, but they're still separated by 90 degrees. So they're still perpendicular to one another. However, their um, lengths are not equal. And then finally, in the fourth shape, we could have the hexagonal lattice. And in a hexagonal lattice, A and B are equal to one another in length, but the only difference between hexagonal and square as it in square, it's 90 degree separation between A and B, and in hexagonal, it's 120 degree separation um, between A and B. Okay, so that would be for two dimensions, but of course we could also have shapes for three dimensions. So there are seven basic three dimensional lattices, and if we're looking here, you just have to know um, the type of shapes. So we have cubic, um, we have tetragonal, we have orthorhombic, we have rhombohedral, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinic. Um, for the most part, they're not going to ask very specifically about the, um, the links or the angles. Um, I think that if, as long as you know the names of the seven basic types, then you should be good to go. So cubic, tetragonal, um, orthorhombic, rhombohedral, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinic. Those are my seven basic three-dimensional lattices. So within each major lattice type, there are additional types that are generated if we place lattice points in the center of the unit cell or on different faces of the unit cell. So we can generate, like we said, a different major type of lattice just based on where those lattice points are. Um, if we think about just in terms of like a primitive lattice, so I see that here. What's a primitive lattice? Well, a primitive lattice is where a lattice point occupies each corner of a unit cell. So primitive lattice is where a lattice point occupies each corner of a unit cell. So if I'm looking here at this primitive lattice, I have a lattice point at all corners of my unit cells. Um, so that would be a primitive lattice. If we go back to the ones that are three-dimensional, let's go back to the one that's last, um, last viewed. So all of my three-dimensional ones have a lattice point in the corners. So all seven of my three-dimensional lattices are considered to be I would categorize them um, under primitive lattice. Okay, we can also um, generate a centered lattice by placing an additional lattice point in a specific location in the unit cell. Um, and we can get two different ones if we're gonna place that point somewhere on a face or in the center of a unit cell. So a body-centered cubic cell, so if I'm looking at this one right here, if I have a body-centered cubic um, lattice, that simply means that we're going to place one lattice point at the center of the unit cell in addition to the ones that are on the corners. So the only difference between primitive and the body-centered is that I have a lattice point that's also just in the middle, in the center of the unit cell, um, versus the primitive is all of the ones that are in the corners. Body-centered would be all the ones that are in the corners and that one lattice point that's in the center of that entire um, unit cell. Okay, I could also have one more type that we can generate, and that would be by placing a lattice point on, um, uh, by placing a lattice point at the center of each of the faces 
of this unit cell. So if I have a face-centered cubic lattice, I'm still going to have all my points um, on my corners. So I still have that primitive cubic lattice, but now I'm going to place a lattice point on the, on, in the center of each face. So if we have six faces on that cube, then I should have a lattice point in the center on each six of those faces. So there's three different uh, major lattice types that we can have. There's primitive, there's body-centered, and there's face-centered. So primitive just meaning I have lattice points at all corners. Body-centered meaning I have um, lattice points at all of the corners plus one center lattice point in the middle of that unit cell. And then face-centered meaning that I still have my corner lattice points, but now I'm going to have a lattice point on each face. Um, or each side then of my uh, unit cell. Okay, so once, um, once one places atoms within a unit cell, the structure of the compound can be seen by bonding the atoms to one another across those unit cells. So the lattice by itself doesn't define a crystal structure. To generate a crystal structure, we have to associate an atom or a group of atoms at each lattice point. So when we're talking about um, when we're talking about the crystal lattices before, we're talking about those lattice points. Well, we have to have some atom that's associated with each lattice point. So many metallic elements adopt such structures because only elements can form structures of these types. Um, for compounds, the points wouldn't be identical since atoms are just not all the same. Now, in most crystals, the atoms are not exactly um, coincident with the lattice points. Instead, I would say that a group of atoms, we can also call them a motif, is associated with each lattice point. Um, so the unit cell, or a unit cell, contains a specific motif of atoms, just meaning that a motif of atoms is just like a group of atoms. So each lattice point actually contains a group of atoms, and then the crystal structure is built up by repeating that unit cell over and over and over again. Um, so let's say that I have some lattice points that I see are at the corners of this unit cell, and then the motif is here, my, the motif of my atoms, I have like a group of atoms here. So the motif of the atoms is inside of this unit cell. And this is my unit cell, so this is what I'm going to repeat over and over and over again. So I'm going to just, these are my tiles, those are my unit cells. So we're just building across on that. Um, so we're always going to begin with our single unit cell. And in this case, we see that it's um, a hexagonal unit cell. And this is just of two carbon atoms. Then we tie all those unit cells together. Remember, we're just stacking them. We're just building to make that crystal structure. Once we have that crystal structure made, then um, we're going to start to get some intramolecular forces. We're going to start to get some bonding here. So the interconnectedness of the hexagonal, um, of my hexagonal unit cells are going to connect my neighboring unit cells together. So atoms from neighboring unit cells are going to start bonding. So we start with our, our single unit cell. Again, we just start stacking or building them upon one another, and then those are going to bond. The atoms within those unit cells are going to start bonding. That's how I'm going to make my um, crystal lattice. Okay. Ms. Hessel and Ms. Six, would you please call Ms. Schreier? Ms. Hessel and Ms. Six, please call Ms. Schreier. All right, guys, so let's go on to metallic structures. Um, in terms of a metallic structure, so the structures of many metals we know will conform usually to one of the cubic unit cells. Um, so if we're thinking about a metallic solid, for the most part, we're going to find that there's either a primitive cubic metal a body-centered cubic metal, or a face-centered cubic metal. Guys, we're almost at about 10 minutes, and I know that this isn't a long one, but I'm glad that we at least got through um, the crystal lattice structure. So I'm going to end here, and I would not be surprised if for some reason you would see tomorrow when you come in some type of quiz about the four types of 2D lattices, 
the seven types of 3D lattices. Um, what major lattice type can I create if I place lattice points in the center on the face of a cubic cell? And then tell me, how can I form a crystal lattice or how am I forming that crystal structure is really what I want. So really you are responsible for tonight. Slides five through 10. I mean, 10 is really just saying metallic structure or metallic solids will follow the primitive, the body centered or the face centered. That's all I would ask you. And then we will start tomorrow, probably more on 10 and then we'll continue on with more cubic structures as well. So five through 10 is what you are responsible for. I will see you tomorrow. You all have a fantastic night. Bye.